Alright guys, just give me a thumbs up if you're happy with the sound level now. Um, you can hear us better. How much is the machine? So the machine is 699 in this colour, sea salt white. Um, they're also available in truffle black or stainless steel chrome and that price is 799 uh, So 699 here on this, um, on this model. So this is a promo for this model here, the sea salt white. Let's give you a look at it. So chrome, chrome trims and um, sea salt white machine. Hopper up here for um, for your beans, and I've put in um, our host house blends in here. So this one, and um, it comes with its own water filter. So you take this filter out, fill it up, and set it back in again. So. Very easy to use, uh, not attached to the mains, so you can you fill it up, you can plug and play. Uh, very, very simple. So I've had a couple of the guys here use this machine. Um, we unboxed it last Wednesday. If you're watching, we did an Insta Live last Wednesday with Amy. So if you're buying machines, Amy will talk you through the machines and give you all the guidance that you should need. Feel free to send me a DM at any time on Instagram and I'll answer any questions you have there. And as I said, a number of questions I just answered two so it's got its own hopper on top for the coffee beans of course you would use a separate grinder um, and it's got a refillable water tank here at the back which to me looks like it takes about two liters of water um, and it's how long will the beans stay fresh in the machine ah that's a good question so this is very airtight um, and we've had these beans in here for 48 hours and they seem they seem pretty good to me and um, the downside of ever holding beans like this on top of a machine usually is that the machine is on all the time and there's heat and the heat dries out the beans which is never a good thing but in this case you turn it on we literally got here at a quarter past nine and um, we turned on the machine ran water through it cleaned it and uh, it was hot within five minutes so they're super quick both Circa and Mark and Thomas have all used this machine in the last couple of days. I've given them all a chance to have a little bit of a play with it and uh, it's, I haven't given them any guidance or instructions and they have all found their own way to make coffee very quickly. I understand that they're probably you know, experienced professional baristas but still you know, coming up to a machine like this, having used professional equipment um, and using a machine like this it still takes a little bit of time to get used to and I know there are people out there that have sent me some private messages there that bought machines last week they've turned them on they've used the machines themselves and they know um, how easy it is to use them but they just want me to give them a few hacks on how to cheat uh, the performance of the machine to get it uh, performing better um, so this is the machine it comes with um, a selection of stuff so um, it's Porta filter handle. So this is the this is the handle that you're going to be putting your espresso into. We have put, uh, Emer, your question. We have put up to 18 grams into this basket. Um, I don't know what's going to go into it now. So I brought a weighing scales, and I'm going to I'm going to weigh the handle and make a coffee and see what it looks like. Um, I didn't get a chance to make one this evening, so I'm just going to play with the machine and see what happens. Um, um, and. And I'll deal with whatever comes out and I'll show you how I would tweak the machine to give it a better coffee or better crema or better steam texture. Um, so this is what we call a group handle or a porta filter. So if you're used to making um, espresso, like Nespresso pods, machines, you just, you know, put the pod on top of the machine. So this is a new, you know, this is going to be fairly new. So you're actually grinding coffee, you're putting it into the porta filter and uh, you're tamping it then and making coffees. So, um, as I go down through this demonstration, feel free to fire questions into the chat and then what I'll do is if I don't answer them through, we'll scroll back up and I'll answer all the questions as, as, as they've come up. Is what, that okay? What's the pressure from the machine? I don't know that. So we're going to have a look and we'll see. All right. Um, but yeah, so question, any questions like that, fire them all into the chat and then at the end, if I haven't answered them, I'll go back in and, and, and look at that for you. So port a filter handle, we'll weigh that and we'll put coffee onto it later on. It comes with a milk jug, it comes with a little tamper, that's for tamping the coffee. Um, it comes with some other paraphernalia here, uh, tablets, tablets to descale your machine, your sage jug, 
Um, it comes with this thing called a scraper or, I don't know. Anyway, I'll show you what this is for. I don't agree with this. I think it's, I don't think it's a good idea at all, but we'll, we'll show you what that's for. Um, it's for grooming. You can see it there in the illustration. Can you see that? Up here? Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's a little kind of a, it's a grooming tool for the top of your porta filter. I don't agree with that, but we'll show you anyway. And then you get a selection of... Some, someone goes the razor necessary or distribution tool. I'm not sure what that is. No. So I'll answer all those at the end. The end? So these are the porta filter baskets, different porta filter baskets that you get first to put a higher dose or a lower dose in. Um, we'll only be using one. And what else? You get some... Okay, some cleaning tools. This is a blank, a rubber blank for the top, and this is the book, which we don't read, we just go for it anyway. So they should be fairly plug and play. So let's have a look, let's go over here. Um, what pressure is the machine? I don't know, but we brew at seven bars of pressure um, on our Bristol machine out front. Most cafes brew between eight, nine bars of espresso pressure. Um, we brew at a slightly lower pressure profile and a slightly slower temperature, which lower temperature, which gives us um, softer flavors in the espresso and I suppose more more space in which to generate flavors uh, over the time of the extraction. So um, are we okay so far? Yeah. Okay, so let's come in here and I'm gonna show you the settings um, that you have. So power, on and off. You have on this side here, you have the adjuster for the grind size. So I won't adjust it yet, but you can see here the grind size is set to two. And if I adjust this, it makes my grind size bigger or smaller. Okay, you can zoom in closer on that if you want. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so we're all the way down at a setting of two on this. Okay, so that's your grind size. Um, you have, you can go into the menu here and you can pick, you can customize your cup. So you can go through all of the parameters here. So as you toggle through with this um, button here, you can go through different parameters um, and have a look at the settings. So one of the questions that I had actually during the week was, um, is the espresso temperature low? And if you find that your espresso temperature is low, you go in here to shot temperature and you bring your temperature up and down. I imagine this might do it, does it? Or I'm not sure which one does it. Oh yeah, okay. So you, press, you select it. So shot temperature can go cool or quite high. Now, I need to talk to you about shot temperature because shot temperature is going to be super relevant later on when we make milk texture, okay? Um, and the reason I need to tell you about shot temperature or milk texture or the steam pressure or indeed the, the pressure of the, the um, extraction is, you have to think of these machines like you would think of um, your immersion in your house, okay? So this is a... Um, this is a single boiler machine, which means there's only one boiler. So imagine your house running with one immersion and one water tank. And from that water tank, you want to feed two or three different showers. And if everybody is having a shower at the same time, that immersion and all of that hot water is gonna be, is gonna be drained very quickly. So you're gonna lose temperature. And if you lose temperature in the tank in a single boiler or in your immersion, you also actually lose pressure because the hotter the water is, the more pressure you have built up in the tank, in the space at the top. There's always a void in the top of these machines. So they are much like, if you can imagine, um, if you can imagine a cylinder like this um, that holds the water normally inside a tank and it fills to maybe 70% of its space and then the rest of the space is expansion space for steam. So in order to 
create steam, you need the water as hot as possible, which means that for your espresso shot, you need the water as hot as possible. So if you have your machine already at home and you have not gone into menu and increased the shot temperature to hotter, you need this shot temperature super hot. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to know. You need super hot temperature if you want really good milk texture and I'll show you the differences later on. So just think of your immersion at home. You've got a big tank of water and you're trying to fill or you know, fill three showers. It happens to me all the time. My kids here, Siren's laughing. The phone is, is waving so much. <laughs> She's crying um, that they're taking all the hot water. Now, what happens is, so this is a single boiler machine, so it's like a house with only one immersion. Imagine if you had a house with one immersion and every shower had its own individual boiler at every shower. So you would have a main feed of hot water and then in the shower, in each location, you have a, a, a local boiler that actually heated the water back up there. That's what a dual boiler machine does or a machine that has more boilers than this guy here. So just to let you know what you're buying here, this is a single boiler machine. And for context, um, I'll stop talking about showers, but here, um, on this machine, so you've got one, one boiler feeding both the espresso and the steam, but on our bar here, we have four separate boilers. So there's two espresso boilers, a steam boiler, and a water boiler, just to give you an idea of where we're going with this. I'm glad I can't see the comments because Siri is laughing away here, and I'm not so sure whether she's laughing at me or the comments, so usually, usually it's me she's laughing at. No problem, comment. <laughs> so, um, so let's have a look at this machine. I'm gonna make an espresso shot and just show you um, what this is set up to do. So if it's wrong, I blame Mark Brennan because he was the last one playing with this machine and uh, we'll see what he has me, has me set up for. So to give you some um, guidance, I'm going to, uh, Emer's question I think was how many grams are in the basket? So let's, let's just um, tar this. So I'm gonna take my handle uh, I just took the scales from our um, roastery section there and um, take the porta filter and I'm going to set it to zero and I'm going to weigh as many grams of coffee that are in this. So on this machine, if you come down here, you can see in here, so there's auto push. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Right, so there's some notes here. Auto, push once, manual, push and hold. Okay, so... I'm going to push and leave it there. Have a look at this. Okay, so that's, so that's the manual mode. You sit the handle in and it grinds the coffee. Super easy. Brings it to about there. Let's just see what that weighs. Okay, so 13 and a half grams. And I've just noticed we're actually here at grind setting one. Okay, so I'm gonna use it anyway. Let's see what happens. 13 and a half grams seems a little low to me, but it also seems like it's super fine. And the reason I think it's super fine is if you look at the little clumping that's going on here, where you got lumps, I think it's a little bit too fine. Um, so I'm not expecting this to brew really, really fast. It might drip a little and not actually come out at all. So let's make it anyway. Um, you get your tamper, you put this onto the edge of your counter and you just press in like this. Yeah. Now, you don't need to squeeze the hell out of it. A lot of people are texting me saying, how hard do I tamp? The grinding does all the work here. So there should not be a variation between the strength that you tamp and somebody else's, um, or you shouldn't have to force the tamping to, 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 to pest this down. The grinder here does all the work. The idea of the grinder here is that it cuts up the solid beans into thousands of pieces of tiny little um, grains of coffee, and it slows the water down to make the extraction. So um, tamping should not be a big deal. The grinder does all the work and the machine forces the pressure through. So let's have a look and see what it gives us. I'm gonna grab a cup. And here's a couple of things. So you'll notice um, we have a couple of habits when we brew coffee. And if you watch as we brew coffee on the bar, you'll see all of these habits coming through. Um, so see this here? This is, uh, this is what comes up on the, on the screen. 
okay? So there's a, I will always warm up the group head here and warm up my cup. So we'll put that in. And Sarah, when this goes on, you want to try and catch the coffee as it's dropping out here. Let's see what it looks like, okay? Okay, cool. All right, so you can see, oh, it was up on the screen there. We got a 28 second extraction. So tw 28 seconds on 13 and a half gram sounds to me like a little bit long, actually. Um, so here's a rule of thumb of what I'd be going for. I would be aiming for um, about one and a half times the amount of coffee I've put into the basket. So if the basket was, let's call it 14 grams, I'd be looking for a 21 second extraction. That's your basic rule of thumb. Uh, this has already been programmed for a dose in terms of yield. I'm not quite sure what Mark has said here, but we'll, we'll have a look at it anyway on the next one. And I'm going to change the grind just to show you the parameters of what happens when you change the grind. Okay, so that's the first shot. I'm going to do another one all over again. And um, So here's a handy thing to have. You'll see the guys using it on the bar as a brush. Um, you want to make this basket lovely and clean. So these are 54 millimeter portafilter baskets and a 54 millimeter tamper. Uh, for context, we use um, 58 mil baskets on the bars and 58 mil portafilters. So these are slightly smaller, but I love these. When I started my training academy uh, back in 2009, we used 54 mil uh, group heads all the time and I just loved the coffee out of them. Um, and they're also very straight sided. So if you look at the portafilter basket, um, it's a very straight sided basket. So it's not curved in. So it's gonna give you a really nice extraction. Um, Siren, I'm gonna change this grind size. Okay, and I'm gonna go um, up to, we'll go up to six, okay. Just, just to see what difference it makes. So in the last one, it gave me, it gave me on grind size two, it gave me 13 and a half grams in the basket, and it took 28 seconds to extract, and the water is programmed. We'll check what the weight of the water is after I do this. So let's do this all over again. I'm gonna weigh the handle to zero. We'll, we'll put it in for auto. It's grinding here. So, see that? Fifteen grams. So what has happened here is I have this set to eleven seconds grinding, and depending on how much work the grinder has to do, you will get more or less coffee into the basket. So if you want a super fine grind size, like two, which is what we started at, the grinder has to do more work, and in 11 seconds, it's only gonna give you 13 and a half grams. Because I've changed the grind size up to six, and I've still only given it 11 seconds, it can actually get through more coffee and fill the basket more by a gram and a half. And let's see what difference it makes. I think we'll also, Siren, we'll try and measure how much coffee. So bring this also to zero. So we'll measure how much coffee ends up in the cup. All right. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to, same thing. I'm going to warm up the group head. I'm going to just flush a little bit of water through. And then I'm going to brew. So we lock that in. 
Let me start. Okay, so this was actually 25 seconds with 15 grams. So it's, when I was saying earlier that I'd want one and a half times the amount of coffee went into the basket, I'd be looking for 15 grams to give me 28 seconds. So this wasn't so bad and the crema looks, crema looks pretty decent. So it seems that there's a bit of variation. Let's see how much, okay, and 43 grams of water. Okay, so, so these are three parameters now that you could get caught up with and this is the, this is the fun part or the most frustrating part about making coffee when we're brewing espresso. So we've got all these numbers being thrown about. Um, and we, you, if you're ever watching my Instagram lives or, or my brewing in the morning, I'll do a couple of Instagram lives maybe over the next couple of weeks, but certainly brewing um, in the morning, I play, these, um, uh, I play around with the shots and I try and get an extraction that's about 40 grams in the cup and maybe 30 seconds based on 19 or 20 grams. So it's 20 grams in the basket, 30 seconds in terms of time, 40 grams in the cup, and that's your one is to one and a half is to two, so they're your ratios. Um, we try and work on that basis for most drinks, um, although it's not, a, it's not exactly specific, but that's the kind of ratios that we work on. So here, um, while this took 25 seconds on 15 grams, we're just playing around, and all of this means nothing unless the flavor is right. So your only way of telling whether you like the cup of coffee or not is taste it. And then once you like the flavor, you make notes of how you set it and what type of coffee you're using. So that's also a big thing. These machines are gonna be great for the likes of our house blend, um, Brazil, Pedro Branca, Indonesia, Kenya, Guatemala, Honduras, um, any of those coffees that are kind of a little bit medium to rich. Anything lighter or Nordic roast or washed, um, they're just not going to, they're not going to behave really well on this machine. I feel, um, I've yet to do a little bit more playing with it, but we did try to have Guji on it here the other day, the Nordic roast, and it just washed right through. So I'd have to play with it a little bit more and manage the temperature. Um, so, uh, so that's the adjustment on point six, um, and I'm actually quite happy with that espresso. I might do, um, if, I might do one more espresso and just see. What a, what I suppose what a bad one looks like, right? So we might just change the parameters and I'll go up again in the grind and, and we'll have a look at that. So I, so we had this um, we had this basket filling up to 18, 19 grams the other day. So I'll make one more and I'll go with just the grind size, maybe to eight. Okay, so what I'd expect here is I've made the grind adjustment a little more coarse, and I'd expect that the coffee's going to run through a little faster. So it took 25 seconds, I expect it's going to take maybe 23 or 22 seconds. Um, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to see what happens, and we're going to put maybe 16 grams in the basket this time and just see what happens. Okay, so we'll um Okay, we'll do this again, yeah. I think actually what happened there was I, I put it in and I moved it and it didn't quite catch the 11 seconds so it only ground for 10. And what I meant to say there was by changing the grinder and making it more coarse, the grinder doesn't have to do as much work, um, which means that by the time it gets to, from 11 seconds down to zero, it'll actually have an extra gram or something in the basket. We noticed that the first time. So on setting two, in 11 seconds, I got 13 and a half grams. On setting 
six with the grind in 11 seconds, I got 15 grams. So now we're on setting eight. I'm gonna still leave the grind time at 11 seconds and see if we get maybe 16 grams. That's what I would expect. So I'll just weigh this, bring that to zero. Sit that in. Okay, so 15 and a half, so give me a little bit more coffee. I'm actually gonna do milk with this one as well, okay? So I'll do, the, I'll do the milk once this shot has brewed and we'll just weigh, weigh the cup as well and we'll brew into the cup and see what that looks like. Okay, so still crema, and not that bad. I'd be expecting, it's 21 seconds, so it was fine. Um, I like a longer extraction, but again, taste. Let's see what the shot was. 48 grams, okay, so not as much resistance in the basket because the water could get through faster. So that's something to look for. I imagine if you go super fine, like maybe a grind setting three or four, and put 15 or 16 grams in the basket, you get a really nice flavored shot. Okay, so onto, onto milk. I'm gonna make milk for this one. Um, I'm just gonna move this out of the way so you can, so you can video this, right? So, um, you get a jug with this, this guy. The spout on this is pretty poor for pouring latte art, so you want a better spout. I'm gonna use this jug here. And what you want also is a temperature sticker. You can buy these in the shop for a tenner. So steam pressure here is fairly low, okay? Again, I turn on the steam arm and you'll see it's going to build up in terms of steam pressure. Okay, so I would, I would always purge the steam arm, take out the air, and then go back in with my jug. So I'm gonna go in here. And you can see it still has to build back up so it hasn't kicked on yet. So what you want to create here is this vortex, is this spinning around. Can you get into the top there? I stopped here on 65 degrees. So the 65 is clear and I'm now coming up to 70. You can see that green sticker there, okay? So that's the temperature that you're looking for, 65. And that's why you need, I'll just clean this, sorry, sorry. That's why you need a temperature sticker so that you can actually find out what temperature you need to go to. So 65 is a super hot temperature. Um, if we were doing coffee to go and somebody wanted extra hot, we would go to 70. If we're doing coffee served in house, it's 60. So that's your temperature. The milk looks really beautiful. Lovely and shiny. And we just pour it into our espresso. Cool. Okay, so you can make really good latte art with this. 
You just have to know how to hack the machine. And the thing about the machine here is, I don't know whether you could hear it, but Siren, I think I'll bring you in close here and I'm gonna turn on this steam arm, okay? And just listen here to the side of the machine. You can hear it kind of trying to generate steam, okay? Yeah. So, just listen there to it. Yeah, I think you can hear where's the noise from them. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. So what so so what what you can what you can might be able to hear there is there's a little pump in the background you know, trying to generate the pressure for the steam arm. And what you have to remember here is on these machines is there is no residual tank, so there is actually no immersion. Uh, tank holding a well of hot water and steam. It has to build both the hot water for the espresso and the steam for the milk um, as you need it. So it builds it up through coils and then it spurts it out. Um, and that's, that's what these machines do. So why would you buy this machine? If you want to learn how to be a barista, rather than spending 200 quid on a course, I buy one of these machines and have it at home and practice on it every day. You can deliver a coffee like that, you can practice your latte art, Practice how to build up temperature in the group head. Practice how to build up temperature in the steam arm. Um, if you have a Nespresso machine at home and you want to upgrade and start playing with coffee yourself, developing flavors, taking flavors out of the espresso, you could start with one of these machines. These are, in my opinion, the lowest entry level you should buy off Sage. Um, and there are other Sage machines out there, but they won't give you the steam pressure that you need and they won't give you the control of the espresso grind. You've seen there, I've gone up and down the scale. I'm on an eight out of whatever the scale goes up to in terms of grind size. Let's see, like 28 here, 29, 30. So I'm, I'm at the lower, I was at the lower end. Um, so, so there's loads of room here in terms of espresso. Um, we were down to, we were down to like an eight with only 15 grams in the basket. I would say you could go to even six and put 16 or 17 grams in the basket. So play with that. That's a real kind of an accelerator clutch. Uh, if you get my analogy there, you can play, you put more dose in the basket, change the grind size, change your extraction time, start and stop it when you want. So 20 seconds extraction, 25 seconds extraction. What I would urge you to do all the time is purge the group heads. So that means get rid of some of the water. Then lock in your handle and then pull your shot. That's the best way to do it. Um, and then when the same with your steam arm. Turn on the steam arm, let it build up, let it build up. And when it's fizzing, shut it off, put in your milk and then start again and that'll give you. So you need a little bit of time, but it's a really nice way to make coffee on, on the weekends. Um, and as you can see, it gives really nice milk texture. It'll give you some variation in terms of how to brew espresso and you'll actually get flavors out of it. This is tasting really nice, although it wasn't what I would expect in terms of an awesome espresso shot, but it flowed well, it flowed a little fast, um, and that's why all the flavors I can get now are at the front of my mouth and not kind of towards the middle and the back. Um, so it's not that round, but if I was to fix the grind, slow down the extraction a little bit, I'd get more flavors here in the middle. And as you saw, the milk was fairly easy to do, um, just with a little bit of positioning and holding the jug in the right position and creating that vortex. That's the most important thing. So created the machine for the price, $6.99 in the Sage Sea Salt White, um, or $7.99 in the Truffle Black or Chrome or Stainless Steel. Now, we had questions that I have to answer, and let me see if I answered all the questions. So, Emer was asking me about how much grams, so I've answered that. Emer, we've put up to 18 grams in the basket. What's going to be affecting how many grams you can put in the basket is the size of the, of the, the grind. So whether you go down to like a two, three, four, or as you saw there for my espresso, that was about an eight. Um, and that didn't flow too fast or too slow, but it was only 15 grams in the basket or 15.5. So you've got the grind size, how many grams go in the basket, and that's gonna affect the time and actually the size of what comes out. Um, is the Pro that much better than the Express? Okay, so the Pro is without doubt better than the Express. The Express, you won't be able to generate that texture. You won't be able to, to change the grind. Um, and in my opinion, this Pro is the only entry-level machine that I'm willing to sell 
in this range of SAGE machines to deliver you some kind of you know, user functionality or, or to uncover some curiosity where you're going to start, you know, within a month, you'll hack this machine and then you want to start using different coffees, tasting Indonesia, tasting Peru. I think half of the machines that went out last week were taking the new Peru, the rest were taking Honduras or Ethiopia or, or Brazil. So um, you'll, 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 fill out, you'll figure out how to use this machine within a couple of days. You start playing with it then and adding, you know, uh, more grams to the basket or just in the grind size or playing with your milk texture and then you'll be able to deliver out some great coffees and then the question is where do I go next and uh, do I trade it in and upgrade or what do I do but but um, I wouldn't go near the Bambinos or, or any of the others but definitely the Pro would be the entry level that I'd be setting anybody off on because we could stand over how you can deliver coffee on it. Um. Do I need to connect to the mains? Or no, it so it's a filled tank, that's what I showed you at the very start. So you fill the water tank at the back, it's beeping at me here to say fill the tank. So um, it takes a couple of litres and you're going to use about 100 mils or 150 millilitres of water for every shot. I have made four, five, six and there was about a litre in the tank, so there you go. Um, is the temperature good on the espresso? I've heard some say it's quite low when finished extraction. Okay, so a couple of things there. I noticed if you saw at the start of the video, go into the program settings and increase the temperature on the, of the espresso. Number two, um, preheat your cup and uh, make sure that your extraction is good time. So you need about 20, 25 seconds because you have to create the head, uh, the, the, the temperature in the head. But I also noticed that this portafilter filter gets quite cold quite quickly. So I would always be recommending to keep the portafilter filter in the machine and actually even to pre-rinse it. So what you could do, um, when you when you dry your porta filter, um, and we use a brush to brush out the grinds, and um, keep a black towel or something dark, rinse it through the group head, and then just pat it dry with the towel so it's hot, and then you can add your ground coffee into it. So that'll affect the temperature. Yeah. Um, is the Oracle better or the Pro? Um, well, Oracle gives you more temp more control here. Oracle is the next level up. So Oracle is like that home, um, home shower that has a tank at the shower that heats the water right there and you have another tank. So it's not a dual boiler but it does have better control in temperature and it has better control in terms of extraction. So you, you get what you pay for. This is like buying a car and in every other model version there are some incremental differences. So uh, this for me is a really good upgrade if you're on an espresso. Um, a DeLonghi, a Lavazza, all those kind of machines that take pods and you're filling pods and it's a, getting to be a pain in the ass and this is a really good next level step up. Integrated grinder so there's no mess um, which is one of the things I found at home when I had a machine with a grinder to the side for me I was, I was playing around with it a lot and then there was a little bit of a mess and it was just too cumbersome sometimes but once you get used to it it's absolutely fine so I would definitely go with um, you know, I would definitely go with the machine that's right for you. If you want to talk about going for an Oracle or or this Pro or, or looking at the next level up, which would be, if you're looking to upgrade to Oracle, I'd, I'd just go straight for a dual boiler with a separate grinder because you're just going to have so much more fun in the long term. Or well, one of the other coffees was, or one of the other questions, if you've more there, I'll answer them. One of the other questions was, can I make iced coffees on this machine? The way we make iced coffee is we just heat the milk to 40 degrees. That releases all the sugar. And if you need a temperature sticker to do that, so there are the temperature stickers. You stick them on your jug, you buy those in the, in the shop here. Um, and then we just put your espresso with the warm milk and then we fill it back up with ice and that's our iced coffee. So that's how we make iced coffees here with some sugar syrup. Um, have you more questions? Um, thoughts on the Sage Dual Boiler? That's 11.99 entry um, and 12.99. I'll have to check those prices, but I will. they are on our website. Um, and I think they might vary on the colours. So it could be 11.99 and 13.99. If Amy Johnson is watching, she might confirm those prices. She might have them to hand. Um, she might throw them into the chat there. But they're in around that. But with the dual boiler, you need to buy a grinder. Um, I don't think I've the grinder up there, but you do need to buy a separate grinder. Um, and that'd be well recommended because you'll be able to do the loads then. You'll be able to, the, the, the challenge with the lower level coffee machines is that you really need to be using natural coffees or fully or more medium roasts. Whereas with the dual boiler, separate grinder and better temperature control, you can play with single origin coffees that are maybe a little bit more delicate, like our Guji or like our um, Tefera Kebele from Ethiopia or like our Costa Rica that's coming on the bar. And those coffees are super exciting, loads of flavors in there. 
and I was really into tasting those today, strawberries, mango, blueberries, so you get all those flavors out when you go up that level. Yeah. Um, should you heat the porter portal filter before you use it? Yeah, absolutely heat it. Heat everything. Pre so this is all called purging, what we call purging. So preheat the portal filter, purge the CMR, purge the group head, and give your machine every chance to get up to temperature. And that's what's going to make the difference. Um, is your recommendation to skip the razor step? Oh, yeah, I hate the razor. So this thing. So what this does is, when you, when you fill or overfill this basket, the razor sits in here and it, it grooms off a gram or two of coffee, which I think is an absolute waste. You would be better off getting your timing right here, and as you probably noticed me do it, as soon as I fill this basket, I give it a couple of taps on the counter, and all the coffee just flattens down a little bit, just like freshly fallen snow, and it just drops down a little bit, and you could groom with your hand. Perfectly acceptable. It's a technique they use in competitions called north, south, east, and west, and that's just pushing the coffee into the center, tap it down, and then tamp. And that's a perfectly good way, rather than using this thing and wasting coffee. So that's just my, my feeling of it. Um. Minute. Um, and we have loads of questions. Great to get good. such questions and such interest. Uh, is there minimum grams of coffee you would trial? Yeah, like we went down to 13 and a half grams there. I, I wouldn't be going any lower than that. Like for years, Indy used to promote that they needed 14 grams to make a double shot of coffee. But I'll tell you what's going to define this for you is flavor. So the risk of putting not enough coffee in this basket is that you'll create a gap somewhere. Now I don't know what the pressure is, there was a really good question earlier on, how much pressure is going through the group head, and we'll have to measure it. But at this grind size, you'd need a minimum of you know, five bars to drive through the coffee and get some flavor out. Um, so if you don't put enough coffee in the basket, what ends up happening here is, imagine you fill, imagine this is, this is, this is your basket and you fill it and the, the coffee crowns up a little bit like that. But if it doesn't, the opposite can happen and it caves in and you end up with a gap and the water will find that gap and you find that the water will travel on this line of least resistance and it will just channel, what we call channeling, and then you don't get an extraction. So you need a minimum level. I wouldn't be going anything less than 14 and my recommendation would be around 16 grams. What about buying a distribution tool? Yeah, we have distribution tools in the shop for sale, I think they're 15 quid, but the problem with the distribution tools is that they're 57 mil, 57.5, so you'd have to get a distribution tool that is 54 mil. So that's a great question, but you could only use a 54 mil distribution tool. And I think, um, although I have to clarify it, that the distribution tools will only work then on the, the dual boiler, because that's a 57 mil porta filter. And what I mean by that is the diameter um, from here to here is 54 mil, so two and a half inches more or less, or something like that. I think that's it. Okay, so that's all the questions, guys. Thanks very much. Um, if there's anything else you want to know, that took, I don't know, 45 minutes, sorry, 45 minutes or something like that. Um, um, like 50 minutes. 50 minutes, okay, that wasn't so bad. I was thinking about 45. So that's 45 minutes. I was definitely trying to keep it under the hour so we can go with our Instagram live. Um, as I said, if you're watching this and it's days later and you want to know some information, um, send me a DM. I'm happy to answer it. I'm going to create a, um, a post with all the answers um, and you'll see it called uh, Barista Pro, Sage Barista Pro in our highlights. Um, and uh, the machine's here and it's available for demonstration. All I would ask is that you reach out and ask to book in a demo because um, it can happen that people arrive on and we're busy and if we're not and if we know you're coming and we can book in i'll get one of the baristas to meet you or i'll meet you or circa or thomas or or uh mark who's used the machine any of the guys here will, will bring it through the machine show you and you can touch it feel it get to grips with it see how it feels in terms of what you're used to or not used to and um that'll help you make a decision um, and we'll have more machines coming we'll have we're introducing a new machine every month so by the time Santa's here, we'll have about six different machines available and all on show for you. So thanks guys, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate all the questions and the engagement and as I said, any questions send us a DM. Good night, enjoy the winter's evening. Oh, yeah, and then just, yes, so end now.